Let me describe our, uh, where we lived, Texthorpe. As I said, it was a terraced house. The bottom of the street was the timber yard, and beyond that were the marshalling yards. At the other end of the street were the plant works, so there was always a lot of noise. Uh, the, uh, on foggy nights in the winter, which were often, we used to hear the fog signals going off on the railway lines. And uh, I could never understand how they worked. My father said when the explosion went off, the drivers knew where they were uh, in relation to the town. And then uh, in the next street were the ice works. Now their forecourt was cobbled and there was a raised wooden platform all the way around. So the drays, uh, um, and there were mostly horse-drawn drays then, not many lorries, but they used to come down to the ice works for the ice for the fish merchants and uh, and with no fridges in those days, so you had to have the fresh ice. And as children, we used to wait for a lorry or a dray loading up. And often they slid the ice off the platform onto the dray, and the ice often used to chip off. So in hot weather, we used to gather these chips of ice up to suck. <laughs> Nowadays they have ice lollies, <laughs> but we'd no money anyway for ice lollies, even if there'd been any. It was, I don't know, it was totally different then, as I say, it was noisy, it was smoky. And when Mother hung her washing out, she used to get very annoyed if it got sooted up, which was usual because everything was heated by fire, ordinary coal fires. My father was a miner, and uh, <coughs> we lived in Ellicott Avenue, as I say, at Hexthorpe, among most of the workers round about were plant workers. And uh, I don't think they thought very much of a miner's family coming and living among them. <coughs> I think their idea of a miner's family were what they'd read sometimes in the local paper. Probably a couple of miners had been done for fighting in the town centre, drunk and disorderly. And of course, to their mind, you never thought of a miner buying, wanting to buy his own house. But my mother didn't want to live in a mining village and she insisted we bought our own home. Let me tell you about our living room. It's very ordinary. You came in a door there from the scullery, which had a cold water tap. Then there was my father's armchair and a window. In front here, there was the big cooking range. There was the Hot water on one side, well, hot water, you had to fill it with the ladle from the sink, cold water tap in the sink. And on the other side was the oven. Father had made a little buffet out of a margarine box. Oh, and we had it for years. Just a, an upturned wooden margarine box with four pieces of wood at each corner for legs. And there was a cushion on the top with a paisley pattern uh, cover on it. Then there was a recess. Oh, on the mantelpiece, there were the brass candlesticks, one at each end. And we had um, a money box. It was a joint money box for Ruby and myself. It was uh, shaped like a shell from the First World War, and the date 1918 on it. And the base of it, there was a broad band of copper round the base. I should imagine it looked very much like a shell did. Then there was a little recess, and uh, Father had put his shelf up, and we hung our outdoor coats there, 
Ruby and I did, because it wasn't very high. And Mother had a curtain in front of it. Then there was the pantry. I can see that pantry now. Under the, uh, in the corner, the far corner, under the shelf, under the bottom shelf was the dolly tub and Peggy legs. I'm sure you all remember dolly tubs and Peggy legs. And on the top of that, there was the, um, a pension. Now, I think you call it a baking bowl. <laughs> and we put, Mother used it to bake her bread in, but then when the baking was done, she put the bread in the bowl and covered it with a white cloth. And I remember the toasting fork was just as you went in the doorway. And that's where I hung mine, when I had my own home. And there was nothing like bread toasted on an open fire. <laughs> on the other side of the pantry was the stone slab, where, and underneath were some air bricks, because we'd no fridge in those days. And in the summer, we used to try and get biddish pieces of ice when the weather was hot. So her mother could use it in a basin to help keep her butter cool. There was a sloping roof in the pantry, because that's where the staircase went from the entrance. You came out of the pantry and there was a couch with a travel rug and cushions on, <coughs> where I spent many hours, I'm afraid. <coughs> Then there was the door into the passageway. And then on the other wall, opposite the fireplace, was the dresser. We, I remember there was the photo of Ruby and I on one end. I can't remember what was at the other end. Not yet, anyway, but I will. <laughs> In the middle was a very ornate cruet. And I have no idea where it came from. But it was cut glass and plated silver. There were two old uh, salt cellars and often a bottle of medicine as well at the back. There were six drawers, three each side. I'm trying to remember what was in the top drawer. Oh, I know, there were games, uh, board games, drafts, ludo, dominoes, that sort of thing. And um, then there was my father's drawer. It was always known as father's drawer. Years later, when they moved house, it was always father's drawer. And there was uh, his handkerchiefs and a scarf and, and uh, just little bits and pieces of his. And then on the other side of the drawer, there was a box that had bandages and medication of some kind because being a miner there was always cuts and bruises and we'd always a good supply of iodine and bandages and lint. Then the bottom drawer it was um, towels, oven cloths and on the other side it was in the top drawer were tablecloths and um, rent insurance book. The middle drawer was mother's mending drawer and there was always mending because there was a lot of mate doing mending those days. I think they thought it was an, uh, a new thing during the last war when it was big ad uh, notices, mate doing mend. Mother had done it all her life. And then the bottom drawer were dusters, clean dusters. And I only remembered the other day, I know we had a tin with string, but it wasn't. It was a tin with cord, you know, picture cord, that type, something bigger than string, because the string was kept in a brown fabric bag with a drawstring. And I only remembered that this week. Now, I'm here with my feet on the floor. It's red and yellow tiles, like so many kitchens and houses. 
and there's a pegged rug that mother and dad used to peg. Usually they did their rugs in the winter because they found it kept them warm anyway over the knees. It was too hot in the, in the summer to do it. Mother would spend the summer months washing and pressing and cutting up the clippings. I'm waiting here for William to come home. He's late. I wish he'd hurry up. <laughs> Winifred, I'm going to play you as a little girl. Oh, a bit bigger than me. <laughs> Mother, can we go for a picnic on Saturday? Uh, well, yes, I think it... Mrs Francis had a word. Have you been talking to Reg? Yes. Yes, well, she had a word this morning and said about, asked about it. And can we go to Sprotborough? Yes, I think we'd better because it's the races on in, in Town Moor and so it'd be busy. Yes, we we'll walk through the flats by the river and um, so that will be Saturday. We'll go after dinner. Oh, I love Sprotborough. Shall I get the cups and saucers for Ready winter? for father, yes. You'd better. I wish you'd hurry up. It's always an anxious time for a miner's wife when, uh, when the men folk are late home from the pit. Oh. Hello, Winnie. Hello, father. Oh, should we set that spinning top going? There you go. <laughs> I just saw Ruby playing hopscotch in the street. The rate she's going, we're going to have to get my hobby iron out and mend those shoes for her. Right, You're oh, late. Oh, yes. You're late today, love. Oh. oh, it was a good and bad day. There was an accident down the pit. Oh, dear. No one was that killed, one. though. No one was <laughs> killed, so we'll be able to work the next shift. Good, good. And it's not been a bad week, by all accounts. That's uh, two pounds and eleven shillings. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, William, if only, if only you had this every week, <coughs> it would be nice. I'm sure, you know, life would be a lot easier. <laughs> now, there's, let me see, there's um, eleven shillings for the building society. I haven't got a big grocery order this week, so uh, that will do for that. I owe the butcher a little bit. What would you like for a joint on Sunday? Oh, a nice leg of, leg of lamb. Well, it might not be a whole leg, love, but we'll have, <laughs> we'll have some lamb. <laughs> <laughs> you work at the pit, love, you don't own it. <laughs> I've got that left. Here you are, with it. <coughs> You'll have to share it with Ruby. There's a halfpenny oh, each. Oh, thank you. I, I'm going to get some licorice with this. Right. So look, we've got that left. Um, what's what vegetables have you in the garden? Uh, we've got potatoes and um, cabbage. Oh well, right. So we'll just want some fruit. That'll be fine. Things have picked up a lot since we left Bentley Colliery. About time, love. I mean, why on earth you stayed there as long as you did, I don't know. I remember when we lived at the other house and you used to drive, ride your bike down that lane, you would be going from side to side because you were full of fumes. And when you got in, you used to say, oh, lass, don't let me go to sleep, I'll never wake up. Why on earth did you stay so long? And why did he go back there after the war? No. Too much gas and water. It was always going to be an accident there. Yes. And the number killed, poor devils. Yeah. Mm. You worked with a lot of them. They were your old workmates, they were weren't mates. they? They were good mates. You see, if you'd been there, you might have still been on the shift that your mates were on. So there's a chance you would have been hurt as well. Mm. Well, um, shall we get ready for tea? Yes. I'll go and wash up. Um, when it go and tell Ruby. I think she'll be playing in the lane outside. Ruby, and... <laughs> Ruby.
We were a very close family. Whenever we went out walking, we always used to hold hands, all four of us, holding hands in a line. You don't see families do that nowadays, do you? In 1926, there was the general strike. It was a hard time for us. Strong as she was, it pushed mother to breaking point. I used to go with her collecting for the miners outside the sweet factories. The plant workers weren't very sympathetic to our cause. They'd already gone back to work. a few shillings a week from them. So the more we collect, the better it is. It all helps. It can't go on like this any longer. <coughs> well, things are, are really getting desperate now, William. I've used all the money out of uh, our bank account, what little there was. I've already started taking it from the children's account. I hope someday I can make it up. Well, I can't break the strike. No, I realise that, but things are getting bad. I know what. I'll write to my brother in Lincolnshire and I'll ask him if there's any work down on the farm when the harvest comes. Hmm. I'll go down there. Well, that'd help. It'd be one mouth less to feed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll bring you and the girls down in the summer. I'll go and write him a letter, yeah? Right. Well, William did get a job with his... on the same farm that his brother worked at in Lincolnshire. Mother was getting desperate. She'd been failing in health with the worry, because of course she made sure us children were fed, and it was hard work. She made a little bit of money by going out to work spring cleaning with to um, a market garden, bunching up radishes and onions, packing lettuce, and um, we father, as I say, went down to Lincolnshire. He'd been born in Lincolnshire, he'd been brought up there. He'd worked on the farms right until he went working in South Yorkshire. Mother was a country girl too. Her parents had lived in the country all their life and that's where she'd been brought up. We went down. Oh, the doc she went, mother went to the doctor because she wasn't well. I think she thought a tonic might put her around. And the doctor told her she needed a holiday, which was a daft thing to say, because she couldn't afford a holiday. But we went down to join father. He was staying with his brother Frank and his wife, and the two boys. And we went down there uh, for a few weeks. And, oh, it was lovely. Ruby and I really enjoyed it. We weren't used to being in the country, and I remember we looked out of our bedroom window and could see green fields, a large garden outside where Frank grew his vegetables, and there were trees, and there were animals around. And during the day, Mother helped in the house, and then she usually took us for a walk. I remember there was a path across a cornfield but when we went down there, I always clung to Mother's hand because I was frightened of getting lost in the corn. Being tiny, although by then I'd be, what, five? Being tiny, I thought they would never see me in the high corn. But we loved it. And uh, it, was, it, was a it was like a holiday for us. 
father used to give us a ride on the cart if he came past the cottage and um, it was an exciting time for us and I'm sure it did mother the world of good and father years later actually father went back to the land he got a job on a farm near Doncaster uh, a second horseman the farmer believed in using horse drawn vehicles not tractors mechanized things sounds posh doesn't it second horseman there was only two of them <laughs> uh, but they loved it and um, my father had had to get out of the pit because of uh, lung disease and um, it's oh there's a long name for it I can't I can't remember it but we they used to call it dust dust on the lungs and he couldn't work a full week even though there was plenty of work during the war and he had no difficulty getting a move when he died I don't know what the regulation is nowadays, but then two doctors had to sign the death certificate if it was a cremation, which father was going to have. The first doctor came, nice young man. I was there when he came. And he said to my mother, well, um, you know what it is, don't you? And my mother said, yes, I know what it is. He said, yes, he's got the minor's complaint. It's the dust in the, on the lungs. The next day, the, the other doctor came to also sign and uh, see my father, although he'd visited my father while, during his illness. And when the death certificate made out, it said that he'd died of bronchitis, which meant, of course, that mother couldn't get any pension at all which happened to so many people in those days. Things have improved, thank goodness. Now let me tell you about Christmas. We didn't have summer holidays, so Christmas was extra special when we were little. On the sideboard, we had a, a little Christmas tree. It was one of those little artificial ones on a wooden stand. Well, when you've got your trimmings on it, it doesn't stand very well. So mother had a lovely big plant pot and uh, they lined it with paper and filled it with coal so that it wedged it in and it didn't wobble. There was the usual Christmas trimmings that came out every Christmas but there was always two, at least two little sugar mice or pigs pink or white a lot nicer than the modern age ones and mother used to do her baking on Christmas Eve she used to make her mince pies and her tarts and usually she'd have music on the wireless. And later, of course, when it was uh, the broadcast from Cambridge of the carol service from King's College, she had that on. And then when I had my own home, I did the same. And it's something we've always done. And now, my daughter reminds me that it's on at three o'clock and asks me, did I, did I listen to it? A year or two ago, my husband, my son working in America, looked in his radio, well, equivalent to our radio times, to find what station and time it was on, which would be uh, earlier, of course, three o'clock here, 10 o'clock in the morning, over in America. And he went into the office early and tuned all the radios in the offices to the station. And then 
proper time in Switzerland. And they all wondered what was happening because they didn't listen to things like that. Christmas over in America is totally different to our Christmas. And of course, he went round and he said to them, this is King's College, great in Cambridge, England. And my mother will be doing her baking. And she will be listening in Yorkshire to this program. So my memories are now my children's memories. Thank you.